Is God still good? Yes. yes. All the time. And all the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. Amen. Father, we love your words. They are very life. God have mercy if we neglect any one of them. You've given us talents. You've given us a life to live. Oh God, and we only have one. Let us not squander it. In Jesus' name, amen. I was going to go to James 1, but I need to go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Verse 14, Matthew 25, 14. For it is just like a man going on a journey. He called his own slaves and turned over his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. To each according to his own ability. Then he went on a journey. Now remember, talent is one life's earning. Immediately, the man who had received five talents went, put them to work, and earned five more. In the same way, the man who earned two, with two, earned two more. But the man who had received one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Who's our master? Why are you hiding his talent? The very talent he gave you, it's his very life in you. Mm. Why are you hiding it? After a long time to master those slaves. This is, this is not the unbeliever. There's a master and you are his slave. I'm sorry, folks. You can't call your own shots. No. He owns you. Okay, yeah. Those of you with children, teach us to your children. Say, you don't have a right. We, I love the joke, it's tongue in cheek. Military, a drill sergeant says to his company, says, all right, Brian, beautiful day. We could go and just take the day off and uh, just get into civilian clothes and just play volleyball on the beach and and the whole uh, in, instead of doing uh, PT in a ruck march everybody's like yeah woo! he's like uh, but that's not what we're gonna do we're gonna go PT and go on a ruck march we fight for democracy but we don't enforce it here <laughs> do you understand you are soldiers you are meant to fight. You are meant to kick the devil in the teeth. 1 John 3, 7. Don't you know that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil? And don't you know that the devil has shut up the mouths of all of us and is preventing us from speaking? When was the last time, and I'm this not to condemn, but to challenge that somebody said a word it said, how are you doing? And you, and you really meant it. It wasn't a Pentecostal cliche and said, I am better than I deserve. Or I'm blessed and highly favored. I've heard that many times and I don't disbelieve it. I don't. But search your hearts. Do you really believe it? We're not responsible for another person's statement. We're responsible for us. We are naked and exposed before him to whom we are all must give an account right now. What are you thinking now? You say, Lord, shoot. My mind is on other things right now. I'm sorry. Get to the altar right now. If, if you got things in your head right now, look, the altar's right there. And just say, God, I'm sorry. I, I am so sorry. I, I got this problem and, and these thoughts are plaguing me. Be real with him and say, Lord, I, I can't do this. I can't listen to what is being told to me right now. There's no shame in that. There's shame if you are not talking. Is not that the work of the devil? 
the attempt to distract you from hearing the very precious words of God that is meant to give you life and life more abundant. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy the very life that God is trying to give you. And you are not taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Don't you understand that that very talent of the word of God is the one you're trying to hide? Mm. After a long time, this may be end of life, this may be end of season, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. God help you if God comes to you and says, what did you do with what I gave you? You better have an answer. And if you don't say, Lord, I'm sorry, I screwed up. I didn't do it. God, I'm sorry. Show me how to do it. I don't know what to do. Good. Because now you're pleading for mercy. Because mercy will always triumph over judgment. Mm. Don't think you got it all figured out, guys. Don't do it. Don't even get there. God will never despise a broken contract. We just came off of Yom Kippur, David Tolman, which is a picture of the judgment. I'm sorry. I'm going to drive people off. I don't care. I have decided to follow Jesus. I'm not looking back. My job is to encourage you folk and those who are listening into holiness. And to take that holiness to the world that's unholy, that needs the message of life. Amen. He said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Share your master's joy. He says that also for the two talents. And then the man who had received one talent also approached and said, Master, I know you. Really? You're a difficult man. Reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. And I've heard this in the Christian circle where they would say, well, you know, should we be talking to them? You know, uh, not cast our pearls before swine. I said, that's not your call. That happened to me years ago. I said, you don't know if they're swine. In fact, in Leviticus, we, we gave a message years ago. Leviticus is the book for sp spiritual warfare. Eating of the unclean flesh. The pig was representative of the religious. God showed that to me. They appear like they're above ground, but inwardly they're filthy and they wallow in filth. They have cloven hooves, they look like they're clean, but inwardly they're filth. They eat, they, they, they consume, digest, and defecate in four hours. Are the religious any different? They have an appearance of God, appearance of godliness, but deny the power. They don't ruminate like the sheep of the cat. They don't consider. They're not humble. Pigs, vicious. They'll turn on you and they'll trample. And they'll just root out anything that they don't like. And they'll destroy it. That's casting pros before swine. Here's the talent. Okay. Reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid and went off and hid your talent in the ground. Look, you have what is yours. But his master replied to him, you lazy, you evil, lazy slave. If you knew that I reap where I haven't sown and gather where I haven't scattered, then you should have deposited my money with the bankers. And when I return, I would have received my money back with interest. So take that talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And throw this good-for-nothing slave into the outer darkness. In that place, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Guys, he's talking about those who call themselves Christians. James Stewart, he wrote a track that changed my life. It, it brought me through, this, through a second crisis. I was that good-for-nothing. I was a good-for-nothing slave. It was Helen Ewan when she was only 22. I said, oh God, I'm nothing. I'm not transformed. I believe Jesus lives in me. He says, I'm the resurrection. He says, it is not I, but Christ who lives in me. I said, oh God, he showed me. I don't have the resurrection living in me. 
I'm not experiencing the power of God. And I fell on my face in shame. And I wept for a week. And I said, oh God, bring that first love. Oh God, I'm sorry I let my first love. I was a good for nothing Christian. I promoted doctrine. I promoted teaching. And it was useless. And I lost the compassion for the law. <laughs> I didn't cry. I didn't weep. I saw a world that was dying and so afraid of the news. They're afraid of everything and their hearts are failing them for fear they had no hope. And I would go on to audits and I would say, oh yes, Jesus did this and Jesus did that. But that was in the past and he's not living day today. I'm, and then since that time, I would walk into an audit. person falls down and gives their life to Christ. I would be in worship, get up and I would be full of the Holy Spirit. Go somewhere, boom! They start weeping after a phrase or two. And who do we think we are? Have we allowed God to examine the filth in us? Where have we been religious? Where have we given him our all? And said, Lord, I want you and nothing else. Or did we fall right back into the same slop? Go to James 1. If anyone thinks, uh, 1 verse 26. If anyone thinks he's religious without controlling his tongue, then his religion is useless and he deceives himself. I've often wondered about that verse. What does this mean? Pure and undefiled religion before our God and Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. So, let me give you an example. Let's say you're walking down the street. See a person who looks like a good for nothing, quote unquote good for nothing. Like, oh man, he's, he's either dirty or he's just going to buy that money for booze. I'm not going to give him anything. Who are you to make that judgment? You want to know how you are not fulfilling James 127? That person's an orphan or widow or both. And you're not looking past the filth. External filth. Because the statements out of your mouth are performing, are, 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 are exhibiting what's in your heart. He's probably going to use that for booze. Boom! You're done. You just fail the test. You're guilty. You had a talent. You had your very life right there to be able to pour out to that person. Let him buy booze. You obeyed your Father in heaven. Because you were Christ to them. They might buy booze, fine. But you extended love to them. They are now accountable before God at judgment day, not you. You said, Lord, I gave with the purity of my heart. If he says give five dollars, a dollar, I'm giving examples. I mean, there's so many examples, I don't even have time. But that's the most visible one. And you tell him, in the name of Jesus, I love you, I give this to you. they are like, oh, thanks. And never give you... They may say, oh, they may be scamming you. What does it matter? You need to stand right before Jesus. They may scam you. They may look sincere for the first little bit. Let them take advantage of you. Does not Matthew say, he who asks for your cloak, give him your undergarment too? Go for it. What have you got to lose? You think you're living for this earth? You think the things in, the, in your pocket are yours? Proverbs says, do not set your eyes upon riches, for it will sprout wings and fly away. Your property, your clothes, your shoes on your feet. If you have a walking cane, if you have any sort of wheelchair or any assistive device, glasses. You think you're, you think you, you think you're, you're owed this? Any amenities you have? Nice clothes. Any clothes? 
I hear stories of people in Africa. I'm actually in conversation with one. He couldn't get on his knees because his legs are so shaky. He's only had a slice, a slice, think of sandwich bread, a slice of bread for the whole week. He loves Jesus, seeking hard after him. Where are we? Why is the church, are we not interceding and getting up and going and having our hearts set? Lord, how may I do your will today, Father? Yeah, he'll throw someone in, in, in your face and be like, oh, oh well, well, no, that, that's, uh, really? You're going to tell the God of the universe no? Embrace the cross. Say, okay, Lord, I don't care what people say. I don't care what happens to me. I will do or give or both where it hurts. I will let it hurt. The cardinal ethic of a saint is sacrifice. Our lives should be characterized by sacrifice. Why? Because we're soldiers of the cross. I shared this yesterday. It's more difficult to be a Christian than it is a soldier. I know. I was one. I have regrets of my military background. Things I wish I would have done differently. And I believe the Lord said, okay, son. Now I want you to do this. Oh, okay. I'm not saying it was easy. And it still isn't. And I've lost people. I can't tell you how much I've lost. But I'll tell you who I've gained. And I keep gaining him day by day by day. He's worth it of it all. He's worthy of it all. Go to Matthew 25, 31. Jumping back to Matthew. Matthew 25, uh, verse 31. Now, when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on the left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or without clothes and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will answer them, I assure you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Now, you could take it one of two ways. It could be the brothers of Christ, those who call themselves believers, and you pour out for them. And they may turn their back on you. Fine. You're not responsible for them. Where they show hate and curses, you bless and you love. But by the same token, what else can it mean? The, Jesus was also human, and he created man. There is no greater love than one has than to lay down his life for his brothers. Everyone who does the will of God is his brother. But by the same token, let's not be like Cain and say, am I my brother's keeper in the flesh? So what responsibility do we have? The answer is yes. Oh, well, he's not a Christian. Really? You're responsible. You're responsible to your fellow human being. Always remember it's in the name of Jesus. You're not doing it because of the goodness of your heart. Let's face it, you have none. You're not doing it because it's the right thing to do. Sorry, there's no one righteous, no, not one. There's everyone who does right in their own eyes. You're not doing it because it's a good thing. No, you're doing it because of Jesus. Guys, take a stand. Don't wait till you're ready. If, that, if you're waiting for that, Sorry, you're like the man who hid his talent. God gave you everything you need. For, uh, 2 Peter 1.3 
you, you have been given all you need according to the riches and glory that are in Christ Jesus for life and godliness. There, you need nothing more. Why? Because Jesus says it is finished. On the cross, he says it's finished. Everything you need, everything you're ever going to want, it's finished. It's done. He's been given it to you. Stop searching for one more teaching, one more prophecy, one more news story, one more event, one more this, one more that. What more do you need than his word and his spirit? Stop it. In the name of Jesus, I give this to you. I love you. Can I pray for you? We ought to be the light. 120 turn the world upside down. What are we doing? What are you doing? What am I doing? Where's our willingness to look like a fool? Kneel down in front of everybody and just bless the Lord because God put it on your head, on your heart. And you're just so full of thanksgiving. Let them call you crazy. Better to be thought of a fool for Jesus' sake and be well respected in man's eyes. God help you. God help you. If you're well respected in man's eyes because that's how they treated the false prophets. God help you. Be thoughtful because you love Jesus so passionately, so intensely. Let him kill you. Let him stone you. Hurl verbal stones. Let him do that. Now you can say sticks and stones. Won't hurt me. Neither will words. Because my Jesus took it all on the cross. It's not enough to say, yes, I'm a Christian. We saw Ian Thomas. What it means to be a Christian is Jesus Christ living in you. And you are little Christs. Mm, hallelujah. You are little Christs. A bunch of little Jesus is walking around. Where the word of God is indelible. Woo! Jesus! indelibly printed upon your heart. What does he say? I will write my word upon their heart. Amen. Is the word written upon your heart? Oh, I can't remember that. I can't remember this. Have you asked him to write it upon your heart? Do you love him so much where he said, Lord, make me a living letter. Make me a living testimony of your glory. God, use me. Whatever it takes. Keep me on my knees. Keep me out there. Because your son is on display, let me be on display too. I will go outside the camp with him and suffer that reproach. Hebrews. Ask him to write that word upon you and let it breathe and live. And it's not just Bible memory. That's all flesh. In the apprenticeship, he walks with you and says, here's an aspect of my word. Here's this word played out. Here's that word played out. Stop waiting until you're ready. It ain't going to happen. Go. Do. Get off your complacency. And the king will answer them. Okay, Lisa, uh, Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, you didn't take me in. I was naked, and you didn't clothe me. Sick and in prison, you didn't take care of me. Guys, I need, to, I need to speak on this strongly. Get yourself involved in prison ministry. Mm. Reach out. There are, I'll give you names. I have a lot of names where you guys can write letters. They're lonely. They're mm. seeking the Lord and they are hungry. Mm -hmm. I have literally been prevented from going into prison ministry. I'm not allowed to. Like... It's like the Lord is saying, no, son, it's not for you. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. I'm not getting responses. I can only have direct contact with, with a couple individuals. I would love to do prison ministry. And he says, no. He says, you're a sender at this point. Mm -hmm. Folks, start writing letters. Get out of your comfort zone. Stop it. Do you guys understand it's like five It's like $10 for two with toothpaste for them? Candy bar, $3. We have a dear brother. He committed a sexual crime. Gave his life to the Lord through a friend of ours. The son of a friend of ours. 
he landed in jail because he uh, armed, armed robbery. But now he, he's getting his life right, gave his life to Christ. Our friend, his mom died, his father's gone, nowhere to be found. He had some siblings because it was a sexual crime against a family member. Some siblings want him dead. He's got no family. He's an orphan. And the one person that we, we were good friends with, she started her own career. And she doesn't have time for him. Because she says, I, I, I'm so busy, I don't have time. Reach out to people. He, he's alone. He's literally alone in a literal, actual orphan. He's had to be in solitary confinement because the gangs don't like him because of his crime. He's been on quarantine because of COVID through the jail. And he has to fight to stay away from going back into homosexuality, which that he came out of that, or back, or to stay away from violence, because he's he is um, the odd man. He looks something like me, tall, lanky. I'm not tall, but he's taller, and he's defenseless. He has no advocate. He's got nobody to support him. I can't. I'm not trying to paint the sob story like, oh, please help my friend. No. There are people in prison, regardless of how they got there. The grace of God covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. They love Jesus, and they're fighting for survival. Don't let them die. Don't let them know. Don't allow them to go on as if they're alone. They love the Lord. And even those who are in prison who don't love the Lord, they need to know that there's somebody who cares and loves them. Leanne weeped, uh, wept, excuse me, for this one person, and that's what caused him to come back to the Lord. There are scores of people. People don't want to go into the jails anymore. The jails are in severe want for people to just give them encouraging words. Just a correspondence. Even They're not even allowed to see nature and color. There are problems in the prisons. And it's, there are things that happen that are unfair. And they may take advantage. Fine, fine. Ask the Holy Spirit for discernment. There are strangers. Our family was one of them. And we were rejected. And we've forgiven them. There are where, are you willing to, well, I don't have a place for them. Are you willing to give? You don't give out of your plenty. You give out of your nothing. Yes. Right. You give when you have nothing. We say, I will give you what I have here. We'll, we'll find a place because it is more advantageous <laughs> that you get the place than you go out there where nobody cares for you. We were blessed by a lady, single mom. She had a space probably the size of this dining room. And she took Leanne, myself, and we had six kids at the time, took us all in. She's like, I don't care, I'll make room. I believe she'll be rewarded and she'll be blessed beyond measure. And her husband will come back. Guys, then they too will answer, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger without clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? Then he will answer them, I assure you, Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you didn't do for me either, and they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Guys, you were given talents. We live in the richest country in the world. We need to do what we can, seeking the Lord, asking Him for opportunities, 
to bless those around us and to bless the needy. And pour out the love of Jesus to them, neglecting our own personal comfort. It's sacrifice. Our lives should be sacrificial, not successful. If we have success, it's for the purpose of giving to others. If you're made of Joseph, you better use it for your brothers. It's not about you. If your house looks like a pigsty and they come to you just as needy as you are, you better give them what you have. You're the Christian. You have the God of all the universe. You're already ahead. Stop dilly down. Father in heaven, equip us. We need you. Jesus, we trust you. Let us not squander the very life you've given us, the very talent. Let us give what we have. Let us not hide it and be willing to lose it all for the sake of Christ. Jesus, just as you gave Brother Jim Elliott, he is no fool to give that which he cannot keep, to gain that which he cannot lose. Oh God, let us give our lives so we may gain our lives for your sake. In Jesus' name, amen.